Well, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, today we're, we're looking at, uh, at a message, time is running out. I've used uh, Romans chapter 13, verses uh, uh, 8 through 14, and 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Paul declared many years ago that uh, time is running out. Uh, we look back over history, uh, there's, some, there's some startling things uh, that point to the end of this age. And I want us to just look at, at this little short sequence of events. Uh, from the time that Noah built that ark until the steamboat came into view, 5,000 years. From the steamboat to the airplane, was 100 years. From the airplane to the satellite was 52 years. From the satellite to Star Wars, 25 years. And now from Star Wars to where do we go from here? They're talking uh, uh, a spaceship to Mars. Good grief. But my thoughts in all of this, could this valuable thing that we call time be running out for our planet Earth? Are we reaching the, the culmination of, uh, of all things? Are we close to the time when, when we hear the whole creation groaning and prevailing in pain until now? Romans 8. 22. And I'm going to throw out a lot of scripture so you can check it out later. Uh, uh, I don't want you to think I'm just blowing a lot of smoke up here. And then again, when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. And when we hear the heavens pass away with a great noise and the elements melting with fervent heat. Second Peter verses 3 through 10. And then uh, again in Revelation chapter 16 verse 16, we hear the sounds of Armageddon. And when the Lord shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley so that no one, or I should say that, that one half of that mount shall withdraw northward and the other half southward. You can find that in, in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. There are some things that are happening now that give us a real feeling that time is running out and the blessed hope will appear. Let's look at the increase of violence and lawlessness. There's a bombardment of uh, of violence and lawlessness in, in, that the earth has never witnessed. Uh, the disciples, remember, they asked Jesus, what, uh, uh, what shall be the signs of, of, of your coming? And Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And then Paul said there would be worldwide lawlessness. He said there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, 
unforgiving, slanderous, without, uh, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, uh, having a form of godliness but denying its power. He says, have nothing to do with them. 2 Timothy verses, uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. In the United States, there are 35 million victims of crime annually. 20% of all murders are, are, are crime-related passions that involve the family. Violent crimes are on the increase. They're telling us now that, that one out of 12 women will be assaulted or have uh, attempts made against them. Five out of six children will be assaulted after their, uh, during their lifetime. One third of all female uh, homicides are committed by husbands or partners. I remember reading not too long ago uh, a, a woman uh, murdered, uh, I think, four or five of her husbands. After one or two, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but uh, she cleverly fed poison uh, into their system. Finally, after a few of the husbands died, you know, they began to think <laughs> something's going on here. So uh, uh, they, uh, they did some uh, uh, resurrecting of those bodies out of the ground and uh, did, some, uh, did some autopsies and uh, found all the poison in them. Her motive was unknown. She later repented but she went to her death in the state prison in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. In another incident, not so long ago, a quiet, retired couple was murdered in the privacy of their home. Two young military men slipped into their home through an open window, caught the couple by surprise, and slit their throats. After the murderers were arrested, uh, they showed no remorse. They simply said that they were following Satan's orders. The father of one of the boys later said that his son, son was greatly influenced by a game called Dungeons and Dragons. Crimes against children is another indicator of the final times in, in which we're living. Reported cases of child abuse doubled between 1976 and 1981. And according to one source, since then it's gone up 400%. 400%. The treatment of little children is appalling. Children are being taken and sold into slavery. Authorities have discovered that uh, some of these children are victims of demonic worship. Children were interviewed uh, and told of being taken captive by people who sexually abused them uh, during Satan worship. And, uh, and the children were, were threatened uh, that if anything was mentioned, they would kill their mother and dad. Sounds like uh, some kind of fairy tale, doesn't it? In Buffalo, New York, uh, there's a telephone number that you can call uh, to listen to a bizarre uh, pornographic message. Parents were warned by the newspaper, check your children's calls. Is it any wonder that we're reaping uh, a whirlwind of psychologically impaired children? And, and violence is not just local, it's worldwide. 
not only our violence and, and lawlessness in the family, in the schools and on campuses, uh, as we've seen and read, but among nations. Lack of respect for, for law and order plagues the international community. Tourism in, in the Middle East and European countries has been altered by hi hijacking and, and holding hostages. Uh, terrorists don't, don't hesitate to kidnap citizens of another country and, and hold them for ransom. In, in Northern Galilee uh, are the remains of the Syrian bunkers. There's a monument there and it's the, the, the tail of an Israeli jet. It's a monument to those who, who fought and destroyed the Syrian stronghold. The Syrians had set up a fornication over Northern Galilee, and they were going to completely de demolish Northern Galilee and take that part of Israel for themselves. But a man named Eli Khan, he was an Israeli spy in Damascus. He convinced the Syrians to plant eucalyptus trees uh, around those bunkers to offer shade from the sun. And then he went back to the Israelis. And he says, everywhere you see a eucalyptus tree, bomb it. They did it and recaptured the area. Today, when you talk uh, to an Israeli about Russian involvement, uh, he'll tell you very quickly. We know that we're not fighting the Arabs alone. It's not just the Syrians and it's not just the Libyans, it's the Russians. They sense their presence. They know that, that they're there. They know that they're fighting somebody big, so they have to keep on guard at all the time. We're living, ladies and gentlemen, in the last days. The end is about to come. I, I really believe that. I think time is running out. Uh, there's a beautiful picture in, in Ezekiel 47 that shows us some signs that time is running out. Just a few weeks ago at in Getty near the near the Dead Sea, I was excited to hear words that fulfilled the prophecy of Ezekiel 47, 8, which says, the water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. And when it enters the sea, the water be there becomes fresh. Ezekiel said that the Dead Sea shall live and that creatures will live in it, great numbers of fish, Fishermen will stand on the banks of the Dead Sea and pull in great catches of fish. One of the well-known guides in, in Israel related some sobering news. He said, did you know that the Israelis have started a channel flowing out from Jerusalem towards the Dead Sea? He said, over a year ago, we began to construct it, but it was stopped just a few months ago. And when asked why, he said, because of the lack of funds. But we do know, we do know, know everything is on God's calendar. Everything. This will not be completed one day early or one day late. There's a passage in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 1, that came into focus for me. It says, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The Bible says that the wilderness and desert shall actually be glad and rejoice with joy in singing. This is another sign of the end. The Valley of Armageddon has been nothing but swampland for thousands of years. And now, now, this land is one of the most fertile crop yielding lands in the whole world. Trees, flowers, and food abound. Israel has blossomed into a leading exporter of flowers, fruits, and vegetables. 
and it's the third largest exporter of roses and the world's leading exporter of Jaffa oranges. Hmm. Think about that. Israel reported an overabundance of rainfall during the month of January. And even then they were astonished to see the dry barren hills come alive with green grass. It's plentiful. And when you look over the green hills and see the, the poppies and multicolored flowers blooming, you can almost hear the, the hills and the valley singing and rejoicing. I believe this again is a, another fulfillment of prophecy. But last, maybe not least, but Jesus said the time would come when men would not expect the coming of the Son of God. And he said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. And the Lord also said, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Luke chapter 21, verses 34 and 36. And then, I'm winding down. This is probably more than you can take anyway. Uh, we read this warning in the book of Revelation. Chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. The Lord would have us know that just prior to the coming of the end, just before time runs out, men and women over the whole earth will not expect the coming of the Son of Man. And you might say, well, that's not possible. But an appalling thing is now happening. Ministers who f fervently preached about the coming of the Lord, they're not preaching about it anymore. And some theologians, some pastors and preachers are begin, beginning to talk about uh, the rapture as just a mere theory, not a promised fact. So what's happening? We're playing right into the hands of Satan when evil thoughts keep us from watching for Christ's return. At Jesus' ascension, the angel said to the men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken from you up into heaven will come in the same way that you have watched him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Billy Graham is gone now. But he said that he believes the world is coming to an end, sociologically, technologically, and physiologically. And I believe it is. Not just from what Billy Graham said, but what Jesus said. Time is running out. Let me conclude with this thought. Can you feel a tug on your heart? Or have we now gotten cold and indifferent to the coming of the Lord? Do we ask in a, in a tone of unbelief, 
Where is the promise of his coming? Scripture says, for since his, the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were right from the very beginning. Second Peter, verse 3, 4. Have we gotten to a point where we think, well, he didn't come yesterday, so I guess he won't come today. And have we grown cold in our witness to the Lord? Are you thinking, well, hey, I got plenty of time. Well, I'm telling you, if you have come to such a place in your life, I'm asking you, don't lose hope. Keep your eyes upon the sky. Luke 21, verse 28 says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, look up, and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Time is running out. Let's be ready. Father, thank you, Lord, for this message this morning. I, I really, truly believe, God, that we need to be reminded more often than not of your coming, God. And we need to be ready. And we need, we need God, to, uh, to be careful and cautious about what we say and what we do and, and reaching out to, to, to touch the lost and undone, God. Help us, Father, to be bold for Christ Jesus. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.